ready to get down to business? Join seasoned entrepreneur, community leader, and Army veteran Scott Shalom Klein, who will take you behind the scenes with those who work in America's small business scene and speak with leaders, making an impact, creating jobs, and telling their story in entrepreneurship. So let's get down to business. On AM560, The Answer, here's your host, Shalom Klein. And indeed, we're all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship and business. We talk a lot about business here on With Get Down to Business. I'm your host, Shalom Klein. Remember, you can always download the podcast on my website at sykline.com. And while you are there, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Shalom Klein. It's going to be a jam-packed week of content and information you will not want to miss. First guest on the program is Doug Taylor. is the CEO of Taylor Chip, a dessert experience company based in Pennsylvania that ships nationwide. He and his wife started a business with just a $50 mixer from Facebook Marketplace initially aiming to create this perfect chocolate chip cookie for fun and their wedding website, taylorchip.com, doubled as a platform for sharing these cookies with the guests since they couldn't afford traditional wedding favors. It was such a big hit. Well, I don't want to share the whole story. I want to fast forward to today. Taylor Chip sits at a $25 million valuation and is preparing to launch a 20,000 square foot creamery in 2025. Welcome to the show, Doug. Hello, hello. Well, you made that sound so good. <laughs> It is good. I mean, I love talking about this topic. It's great to have you, Doug. Um, Let's dive right in. Your story is incredible. Can you tell us a little bit more about, uh, I guess, the behind the scenes as you and your wife started Taylor Chip? Yeah, I mean, we we really, so I was a drummer. I had a recording studio and I've just always been interested in entrepreneurship, you know, from mowing, mowing yards to flipping cars to everything in between. I just, that was just always what my passion was. I knew I wanted to work for myself. And, uh, little did my wife know when she and I started making cookies together that I would get this, I would, I would think it would be a good business idea. Um, and that's kind of how it started, but I also didn't really think it was the best business idea, but what I really loved about it was the opportunity to just do things together. And so that's kind of where the idea launched is, uh, like you said, we started with our wedding. Uh, we made wedding favors, and then from there, people started ordering them. And then we opened up a little uh, eight by twelve market stand in our in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and uh, started shipping in 2019. <laughs> That's wild. So, what would you say are the it was the number one biggest challenge that you faced in growing Taylor Chip? Oh man, I mean, it still is the number one biggest challenge. I think it's all about like capital. You know, where where is capital coming from? How to either find it through investors or how to find for us it's been cash flow managing cash flow and growing so fast is is very tough and so that's that unequivocally that is the answer okay so let me jump into that next point is how did you manage to grow your business without investors debt or startup capital we put in a lot of sweat equity so i would say you know in in the world of business you basically have you either have an investor or you have a bank, or you have sweat equity. And I think most businesses require all three. And so we just kind of started, like you said, with a $50 mixer off Facebook. We did, never got in over our heads, and we're just very meticulous about how we spent money. And very, you know, we one of our core values is to be frugal. And so we just stayed that way and, and only grew with the cash that came in. And then I had a digital marketing background as well. So we were able to leverage like Facebook ads and stuff like that to get a insanely high ROAS. Um, and so we were able to kind of like spend as much money as we wanted to more or less on customer acquisition because we were profitable as soon as they paid. And so that's kind of how we were able to uh, fast pace the growth. Okay. Well, I'm chatting with Doug Taylor, CEO of Taylor Chip, dessert experience company based in Pennsylvania. But again, they ship nationwide. We'll make sure our listeners can get in touch, of course. Um, But Doug, what advice would you give to other entrepreneurs who are trying to navigate business success during uncertain times? Mm. Yeah, I would say one right now, because I know, because we're actually raising money for the first time ever. We're trying to... um, uh, raise our seed round. And because we do want to go faster, we've kind of proven the model. We have the historical da- data. And right now is the hardest time in, man, probably the history of the last like 20 years uh, to raise money. And, uh, you know, one of my friends is uh, ex co founder of Venmo and he's raising money right now. And he's like, raised, you know, you can imagine he's raised tons of money and he's like, 
all excited about getting a six hundred thousand dollar check compared to you know like it's just it's just hard and so when you're thinking about a business i would dive into th- tools like tiktok shop tiktok shop is incredible there's so much virality to be had on tiktok and you get customers for free and so you really want to look at what business can i start that i don't need to rely on capital to do and so for us it was making cookies um, we wanted we wanted to do ice cream as well and all of that, but that was more capital intensive. So we started with like the minimum viable product, which was a chocolate chip cookie. We only had one flavor, and we made you know six six quarts at a time, and we sold it. And so you could still do that. You can do that with drop shipping. I mean, with anything. But the biggest thing is investors or anything like that, and even you, you can't rely on anybody to back your idea. At, with where the world is, you need to be able to make sure that it cash flows. And I think any business that's worth its weight in gold should be able to cash flow relatively quickly with a low investment or overhead. So you should really be relying on like the skills that you have and and using your skills to create your first product or service or whatever that is. Doug, how important has networking been to the success of your business? So originally, it wasn't important at all, actually, which is which I know is is not um, because I I kind of just sat behind the computer and sat behind the the factory making cookies, or I was doing marketing. So I didn't. No one had to know me because I could put a video together and I could get that reel to go viral on Instagram or or on TikTok, or I could I could create ad copy and and send that out. So it wasn't important. And so because of that, I didn't value the networking side of things. But now it's everything. I think if you want to build a business at scale to any degree, networking is going to be the way that you do it. Because, you know, I, one of my, one of the people that I've been talking to about this whole investment thing is he, he has a whole deck where he talks about like the do's and the don'ts. And, and one of the, one of his like key principles is, there are such things as king makers, meaning that there are people that can make your dream come true. You did, but you can't, you'll never see them if you're not networking with them. So originally, I think I made a mistake by not focusing on networking because I kind of had all my marketing tools dialed in to such a degree. And now I've had to play catch up over the last year where thankfully we have built a crazy good business. It's, it's great notoriety. And so it's easy to get a hold of people, but I wish I would have started getting a hold of people sooner. That's cool. So what advice would you give to someone who wants to turn their side hustle into a successful business? Well, I would, my advice would probably be a little reckless. I quit my job. Both my wife and I quit our jobs (laughs) two weeks before our, before we made any substantial income. So two weeks before we opened our first market stand, we had no right to quit our job. We only had like, I don't even think we had like a thousand bucks in our savings. Maybe we had 5,000, but we just went all in. And so my advice is going to be if you have, or if you feel con- convicted about something, or if you have any bit of traction, just go all in. You can always get another job. <laughs> That's wild. I love it. And uh, lastly, uh, Doug, what are your plans for the future of Taylor Chip? Oh man, we're building our uh, 20,000 square foot facility where we're going to be able to do uh, 40 pints a minute and 200 dough balls a minute to continue to grow our retail locations. So we're opening up in Philadelphia, Rittenhouse Square and Fishtown, some, some right beside like Sweet Greens, for instance. So A plus type of real estate where, and that we're hoping that that model, we can take that model around the country. And then as well as um, we are in about 250 retail locations now with our wholesale partners doing CPG. So we really see our path kind of being like, Dunkin' or Starbucks, um, maybe even like smaller brands like Jenny's or Milk Bar. Um, I love all of these brands and I love what they have done. And so our biggest thing is we want to we want to do what Dunkin' has done, but we want to maintain the value with our core value, which is our ingredients. We want to make sure that we're true to who we are and we're always letting the customer in to see the journey. But yeah, that's where I see it. I mean, I really think we have the potential to scale this thing nationally and then internationally. We, we have such good momentum. Thank you for sharing your story and expertise with us today, Doug. It was really great having you on the show. How can our listeners get in touch with you and uh, learn more about your brand and, 
and all your plans and uh, no doubt continue to, to hear about your updates. Yeah. Taylor chip on TikTok, Taylor chip on Instagram, Taylor chip.com. Um, uh, Taylor chip on Facebook. And then we, we also, uh, my, my personal Instagram is Doug, Dougie Taylor. Um, just because Doug and Doug Taylor or Taylor, all the, all the regular ones are taken, but Doug, Dougie Taylor on Instagram. And, um, yeah, but, but mostly taylorship.com will point you everywhere you need to go. I love it. You're a marketer after all, uh, Doug Taylor, really appreciate it. Best of luck to you. And uh, I look forward to staying in touch. Uh, quick break here on the show. All about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. We'll be right back. 